All right, this is Chris. Welcome back. You made it. It's part two. You're sticking with me here, and we've got an interesting low-key painting in the process. We um, we changed our setup here a little bit. As you notice, I've made my setup a little bit different. I've um, moved my camera. Well, I've zoomed my camera out, actually, on my iPhone. I, uh, I video with an iPhone, actually, and I have it just set up on a piece of plywood uh, on my art table here. A bit of a contraption but it works and so we did our contour drawing we also talked about high key middle key and low key so uh, today is going to be our low key kind of feel so we're going to do a low key painting we have um, an example of a low key painting with lots of darks and just a little bit of lights in this painting versus um, a high key painting which would be mostly mostly a lot of white paper and lights and just a little bit of uh, darker tonal values uh, nice this is a beautiful example of a um, high key painting with just a little bit of uh, middle and darker tone tonal values in the uh, painting and then we just looked at uh, a middle key painting which is mostly middle tones um, mid tones you know few touches of darks here and there on the roofs and in the trees and uh, in the distant mountains and then just some sparkles of white paper lights here and there around the uh, water area and around the these uh, cabins along the uh, waterway okay so uh, since we're doing our darker low-key painting um, I thought I'd also uh, talk about using uh, different brushes. I think uh, it's great to practice different uh, techniques um, when you're first starting out in watercolors or even if you're painting a while and you want to try some new brushes out, some new techniques, I definitely encourage that. Um, the more knowledge you can have, um, the better it is. Um, uh, it, there's a lot to learn in watercolor as you know, so uh, you know by the time you're talking about paints and palettes and what colors you're using and brushes and papers and yeah, there's a lot to know so you take your time you learn a little bit as you go um, I noticed when I first started watercolor painting seriously um, probably 15 years ago I would say I um, you know would go to the art store every couple weeks and walk around and look and and then I would also be watching different types of videos and looking at books and seeing different artists and different brushes they use and all you know all those interesting things and you know I picked up different brushes here and there so these are today we'll use some mop brushes and a needlepoint brush and maybe we'll use a uh, maybe a round brush too as well like a standard round but this is uh these are squirrel hair mop brushes and this needlepoint I think is a um, mix of squirrel hair and uh, uh, maybe some Kalinsky sable hair and then this is a Kalinsky sable round brush so we'll use these type of brushes today in our painting and what's really nice about the mop brushes is you have lots of you can get lots of water lots of color onto your paper and especially for lower key paintings and middle key paintings uh, you need to work quickly of course in watercolor most you know um, a lot of artists I would say maybe 75 percent of watercolor artists like to work faster and sort of uh, expeditiously as they paint so this would be um, the mop brushes are will will help you achieve that task of painting you know quickly moving through your painting at a good pace you know you're working against uh, things drying and so forth the paint and the water drying and trying to blend your colors nicely so um, we'll use the mop brushes and of course over here on our setup we have a water a water container and a sponge we'll fill our brush with water tap a little water onto the sponge and then we can go over to our palette with our paints we'll spritz our our paint with some water a little bit of water okay now for this um, you probably notice I, I've done quite a few videos um, for those that are regulars I've done quite a few videos recently with the glazing techniques where we're kind of doing like a two or three part glazing technique so we'll stick with that kind of format right now we're going to do a glazing technique where we're going to do our first lighter wash get that onto the paper and then let that dry and then once that's dry we can come back and we'll start doing our middle and uh, darker tonal values into the painting so here we're going to use a lot of greens and golds and reds 
and a little bit of blue in the sky. So let's start um, working on that. We'll get some cobalt blue for our sky color. Um, maybe a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit of French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue for our sky color. It's going to be a lighter sky, not too dark, but always remember when we're painting watercolors, you, you have to go darker than you think. That's a very good point to remember. Paint it a little darker than you think it's going to be because when it dries, it's going to dry lighter. So it would look better if we can paint it the first time correctly and then not have to worry about going over with more washes. I mean, that's the ultimate goal, especially with this type of like low-key painting you're going to want to try to get everything done correctly um, going through your painting the, you know the first time versus trying to go over things repeatedly so here we're just taking that nice blue and we're getting in the sky color lots of water touch onto the sponge a little bit pick up some more blue now since we're going to be using a lot of um, greens and golds and reds. No reason why we shouldn't put a nice blue wash th throughout the painting as an undercoat. So I'm going to just do an undercoat quickly, the whole painting, with some blue as an underwash. And this will make a beautiful glow to the painting once we start going with our other colors over the top. And if you notice any areas in the painting that you want to keep lighter, you go with a little bit lighter of a wash, just a little bit of color maybe. So there's some lighter areas over here in the foreground I'm noticing that across the way from my photograph. And you have fun with this. This is the fun thing about painting with different brushes and different techniques as you know. You might find that you like this technique a little more once you're painting for a while and you're you know you've kind of learned all the fundamentals first and then you know you can start changing some techniques around you know you have to find what you like does that make sense so here we're just having fun getting the first wash on and I'm gonna add a little bit of a touch of orange here to the sky And it's all going to blend nicely. You don't have to worry too much about marks of brush marks on the paper. That'll all blend as it uh, dries and finishes its uh, process of uh, mingling with the paints and then drying. All right, so we have our first wash on. Looks really good, I think. We have a nice underlayment of nice cerulean blue, cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue. And we're going to come back with um, some darker darks. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to go in and start picking up some golds, which is um, yellow ochre. And we're going to be using quite a bit of paint here. So I'm going in and getting lots of paint. Trying to conserve on paint. So I'm going to try to get my paint off the brush. And then I rinse off the brush now. And we're going to use some cadmium red. So I'm going to put some red in there. Cadmium red, some alizarin crimson too. So I'll mix between alizarin crimson and cadmium red over here and I'll also over on the other side of the palette over here I'll, I'll put some cadmium orange
so I added a little bit of cadmium orange to the red and uh, gold colors and since our blue is since we've completed our blue in the painting and our underlayment for our first coat I'm going to I also forgot to mention this this is very very important I'm used to painting with my palette most of the times holding my palette in my left hand and painting that way for the for this setup here I would have your palette and your water and everything on the right side and then you're painting on the left side because this this is an issue when I'm crossing over my paper with my brush going back and forth to the water so this is not a if you set up your watercolor table or if you hold the palette in your hand then it's going to be it's going to be in front of you this way so it won't be you won't be going over with your brush and getting water but here I, I do it because I'm used used to having my palette on the left so I'm always used to going to the left side to get my colors and everything. So I, it feels more comfortable to leave my palette over here. But the real, the, the proper way to do this is have your palette with all your paints on the right side with your water and your sponge and have your, your paper and your painting on the left side. This way you're always working with your paints and your waters on the right side and then neatly coming across and then painting. Because here you can see I'm sort of crossing over. That's not good. I've already dripped some stuff on here. Not that it's a big deal with uh, my technique. If I drip a little bit, it's not a big deal. But um, again, it's probably good to keep your all of your paints and your water supply on the right, and then have your or on the left, or vice versa. If you want to, if you feel more comfortable, have everything on your left side. But you're probably better off if you're a right-handed painter with your brush in your right hand. Everything is on the right. If you're a left-handed painter, then everything, your water, your paints, your palette are over on the left and then you paint this way and then if you're right-handed you'd have your paints and your water over here on the right and then you work this way okay so this is great we have our first wash complete let's let this dry good time for a break take lots of breaks when you paint that's what's great about the glazing technique too you can also have an automatic when you get your first wash done put the brushes down take a nice break grab a nice glass of water, a cup of coffee or tea or something, and um, maybe do a few chores around the house, whatever uh, you have to do, and then you come back. Maybe like a half an hour later, the paper will be nice and dry, and then you can come back and use a nice uh, flat working surface with your paper roll back to its uh, flat state after it dries completely, and then you're ready to go for your second uh, glazing. All right, so let's come back. We'll come back in just a few minutes. Probably going to take a half an hour break right now, and then... Uh, We'll uh, start painting again. Okay, we'll see you in just a few minutes.